Welcome to the Ameridroid Mini Lab slash electrical closet. As you can see today, we've mounted a Northbridge cooler, passive heatsink, on a Nodroid XU4. So what we'll be doing is comparing some previous test results with tests, two new tests that we've done with this cooler. All right, let's get started. So what you can see here is that um, <clears throat> We have the active cooler, the one that comes on the XU4. We have the passive shaped media case that we've tested in the past. Then we have this cooler um, with the Northbridge um, cooled passively. And another one with the same cooler, but with a 200 millimeter fan blowing on it. Um, like you would have if you had it inside of a server rack or some other type of chassis with cooling. All right, so let's get started with the active cooler. As you can see, it started throttling within four or five seconds here. It went down to 900 megahertz from the two gigahertz um, normal setting. And uh, it continued to throttle throughout the test. So we ran the exact same test, which was a sys bench on eight cores. And um, it completed the test right about here at the uh, 95, last 95 here. Then it started cooling down because the test was completed. So uh, 547 minus two lines in the beginning is 545, so 545 seconds with a an average frequency on the cool on the CPUs on the high core high the high powered CPUs is 1.32 gigahertz. Okay, now let's go look at the shaped media case. These are the same results that you've seen before if you've watched the other video. Um, this time it took approximately 21 seconds before it throttled, <clears throat> and by the end of the test, here is about the last, uh, actually here is about the last um, when the test finished at this 95 Celsius line. So 508 minus 2 is 506 seconds. So that's considerably faster than the active cooler. And you can also see that the average CPU speed is considerably higher as well at 1.56 or 1.57 gigahertz. Okay, now we'll move on to the passive north bridge. So that's the cooler that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, so it took less time than the shaped media case to throttle, but uh, longer than the active cooler that comes with the XU4 before it started throttling to 900 megahertz. We're looking at about seven seconds here, and uh, seven or eight seconds, and it continued throttling throughout the test. But by the end here, here's the where the test ended. We're at 500 and. 24 or 522 if you take off the two lines at the beginning which when you compare it to the shaped media is slower than the shaped media at 506 seconds but you can see here from the average the average gigahertz that were faster slightly than the active cooler but um, slower than the shaped media case. And for a final test, we thought, well, why not just uh, run a case fan on, point it at the XU4 as you would have it possibly inside of an enclosure. And as you can see here, it took about eight seconds before it started throttling, eight or nine seconds. And then uh, if we go down to the bottom, I think you'll be surprised to see that here's where the test completed. So 
so about 440 seconds. This is the fastest of all of the four tests by a considerable amount, by about uh, 25 or 30 seconds. And uh, also you can look at the average gigahertz and see that it's about 120 megahertz faster than the shaped media on average, which is the next best time. Of course, this does have an active fan blowing on it, so and it is a, a r relatively large fan, 200 millimeter. But uh, the benefit of a 200 millimeter fan is also that they're generally sorry, 120 millimeter, not 200 millimeter. A 120 millimeter fan is generally um, quite a bit quieter than a small fan. So you, in many cases, you can't hear it, uh, depending on the type of enclosure and type of fan. But if you're looking for best performance, something like this with the with the North Bridge, North Bridge with a with a case fan blowing on it is a very good option. Now we used um, thermal pads just on the chips themselves that are on the XU4 and we did have to reconfigure the way that the clips mounted this to the board. It wasn't a very difficult procedure. But just with that thermal tape and a little bit of modification to the cooler, no physical modification, just re repositioning how these were spaced, that was all we had to do to, the, to that cooler for this test. Well, I hope you enjoyed the results, and we will see you next time.